The last 12 months have been so taxing on many of us. It's been a time in our lives that's left us feeling tired, drained, unmotivated, and all these emotional side effects are also manifesting themselves in our physical lives. What do I mean about that? Well, think about it. All the self-isolation, the masks we've had to wear, have resulted in all of us going into a little bit of anxiety, sometimes even lack of sleep. And let's not even talk about the working from home, because I mean, when was the last time you dressed up for anything? Why? Because we're all turning to comfortable clothes and we've kind of like forgotten what it feels like to just feel normal. And that has resulted in our self-confidence taking a little bit of a knock. So today I have invited Sia and Caroline over for a conversation that can help and encourage not only us as ourselves sitting here, but you as well to live your fullest life. Sia, yeah, Caroline, thank you so much for coming over, first of all. Like, you know, for me, lockdown has been a period of time where I've dealt with so many challenges from, I sleep like a baby, so sleep hasn't been one of them, but yeah, the eating habits have been one of the challenges for you. What, what has been some of the challenges over the past 10 to 12 months or so? Well, for me, I literally had a situation where as I usually go to red carpet events, that's where I get to network, meet people. Work. I do shoots all the time and I need to style people on set. Mm -hmm. And now with the lockdown, I couldn't do all of that. So being at home, I was literally trapped in my own mind. I felt like it was the most precious time I had with my baby boy. You know, I have four kids. It's a lot. I will not really have that alone time with him again. So it was wonderful. My husband was there with the birth and it was precious. And then he had to go home and it was wonderful. You know what? One of the things that I loved about this past year has been was how there was such a big focus on self-love and self-awareness and just being kinder to ourselves because we all kind of forgot that somewhere along the way, right? <laughs> Speaking of being kinder to ourselves, there's this great show on BBC Lifestyle called 10 Years Younger in 10 Days. Yeah. And considering the way people are feeling at the moment, like um, I did a poll on my Instagram and the majority of people really felt like this year has been too rough on them, you know. Mm. Um, Put on some years yeah, <laughs> on top of the weight. Years. So I thought I'd show you guys a clip from the first episode. Um, yeah, I think a lot of people can relate to it, you know. Sometimes you just need some reminding that you actually are okay. There's, you're focusing on stuff that's not great about yeah. yourself and, and you start thinking that that's all of you, but it's not true. So you need someone to remind you that there's something about you that's very special and amazing. I love that. Yeah. Great, let's check it out. So the technique in how to walk correctly in your heels is heel followed by soul. Heel followed by what? Soul. The other thing I'd like to teach you is inner confidence. Because what you feel about yourself is what you project out to the world. Do we agree? Yes. Yes? yes? Can I share with you my favorite affirmation? Yes. Yes? I am here. I am here. I am powerful. I am powerful. I am enough. I am enough. Strut, nice and slow. Yes. Heel followed by soul. That's it, ladies. Own your space. You're doing great. I just want to feel like a nice, sexy woman. I just want to walk down the road and actually not care if anybody's looking at me. I know inside there's that beautiful, powerful woman who is fighting to come out. Are you ready to come out? It's OK, let it go. We have to let it go. I am enough. I am enough. I am enough. Yes, you are. 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 Woo! Yes! Should we? I think, yo. Yeah. It's, it's that when they shouted back to her, right? Oh, no, to say, yes, you are. Yeah. And sometimes you just need, like you said, Caroline, someone to just remind you. And the way she was saying that, I am enough. It's like, she's not only telling herself, but she's also telling every part of herself that doubted that. Yeah, that's exactly it. No, it's, so, it's such a powerful thing to do. I mean, you can see in the beginning, it, it, she actually needs some convincing mm. that she really is enough, you know? And even though she believed it on, on the inside because she said that she wanted her outside to match her inside, 
um, she was not really, yeah, she wasn't projecting that. So projecting it out outwards towards everyone was amazing. Yeah. I think, yeah. Voice was very low at the beginning. And shaky, mm. right? Yes. Yeah. And doubtful. Yes. Yeah. 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 So as she kept saying it, she kept getting louder and started roaring out those words. Mm. And the emotions when she starts crying, for me, I felt it. You know what this reminds me of? Um, when I was younger, I got teased for my freckles. And the shift only came for me in high school when people started describing me as authentic and beautiful and unique. That was actually the big word for me, unique. And what I relate to, to what Paulette was doing there is I had to also start believing it. I had to start telling myself, because I could hear what others were saying, but if I don't believe it, no one else no one is it. going to and yeah. I'm not able I'm not gonna I be able to carry it. it. Right? Just shout it out. I was like, yes, you are enough. <laughs> <laughs> and in your work, I mean Sia, this whole thing of your outside matching your inside. You, this is one of the places where you can't fake it till you make it. You can't, mm -hmm. not at all. For, for me, I think like your outfit determines how you will be as a person as well. Mm. Fit a room with a smile, mm. be yourself, you will attract the best energy ever yeah. once you actually exude that confidence. Not too much, but keep it neutral and genuine throughout. I guess that's the whole thing about live your fullest life. You literally have to, once you've done the work on the inside, because I always believe that that's where it starts, because even if you put on a power suit, right, you're not going to be able to strut the way that Paulette was strutting no. if you don't, don't feel in the it, yeah. inside that mm. yes, you know, uh -huh. yeah. <laughs> uh -huh. you're <laughs> you've got the vibe, right? Because you're literally, you are what you wear. Do you believe mm. the same thing? Yes. I love, <laughs> I love dressing up. <laughs> I really love dressing up. Even in lockdown, like, um, when my, my brother came over to for a visit, he's like, what are you dressing up for? I'm like, you, <laughs> you know, nice. you're coming to visit, I want to look nice. Mm. So, okay. yeah, I love dressing up. I love dressing up for my kids. Like, sometimes my kids will also say, Mama, like, buy a more for now. And then I'm like, for you see, that's what I wanted to hear. <laughs> love it. But no, I think that that's something that I need to kind of like remember that just because we are in this time where we're going to be continuing with, you know, Zoom meetings for a long time and working from home. But it is that thing of dress up, even if it's for yourself, you know. Yeah. Yes, you might be wearing your pajamas at the bottom and it's a party on, you know, yeah, on yeah, top. Yeah, yeah. What do they say? Business on top, party oh, at the yeah. bottom. Yes. <laughs> but show up and not for the other people that you're going to see in the in the call, but for yourself. Well, definitely. And for the past 10 months, it's just been a bit rough for everyone. Mm. So working from home has left them feeling too comfortable in themselves, that they've literally stopped wearing their suits and dresses for work. And now they're literally stuck in their track suits or gowns as well. So now we're dressing down and we're feeling down. Exactly. Okay. So now my next point comes with the whole situation of talking about Rachel. So Rachel is actually asking for assistance. And the show that we're going to be focusing on is You Are What You Wear. I love this and show. for me, I feel like this would be a great story to tell and share with everyone else that's going through the same thing. Mm -hmm. And they will literally draw some inspiration from that if they're feeling a certain way as well. So the whole point about Rachel, it's for her to now literally move from being in that down position mm -hmm. and that mood to build and uplift herself again and to smile again and to live. I love and this live, show. Yeah. All because of clothes, right? Definitely. Let's take a look. So let's take a look <laughs> and see what the show is all about. I want you to tell me, what do you see? I see Rachel in a sports gear, ready for anything. I am finding it difficult to understand why you're here. Well, a few years ago, I just made the decision to relax, stop kind of trying to impress other people, be happy in my own skin, stopped having my lashes done, stopped dyeing my hair, and just wore whatever I felt comfortably. But that was two years ago now. And it can kind of make you get stuck in a little funk where you don't feel depressed or sad, but you don't feel glamorous or attractive or... You know really what? Rachel. I think as a collective, we are Rachel and Rachel is us because we are going, like you said, from this time of wearing our tracksuits and whatnot. And some of us are slowly going back into the office sometimes, you know, but it's hard to now switch your mind from you've been wearing your, your Uggs, you've been <laughs> wearing your tracksuits, making that switch into going back into your wardrobe. Please, Sia, we need help here. You must save us. All right. <laughs> I'm here to the rescue. So for me, I would feel like when it, when it comes to your height, mm. nice heels for ladies would definitely work. Yes. That would be the point yes, number one. Girls. <laughs> point number two would be layering. So if you've got those areas that you want to just cover up here and there, don't just stick to just black. Mm. 
That makes you slimmer, yes. But if on a hot day like this, you definitely need to have layers. A kimono would work. I am so guilty of that. So black is my favorite my color. <laughs> because I'm like, whoop, I look like black is so easy to wear. You know? So yeah, colors are very important as well. And try different patterns mm -hmm. and a nice haircut for the gents. We don't leave the, we don't leave the guys out as well. Yes. So a nice, uh, nice haircut can just uplift your mood as well. And yes, so for me, I would say that heels for height, color as well. A new lip gloss or a new lipstick as well just does a bit of a pop for, for you ladies as well. I agree. So yeah, we've got this. And I've, I've seen that you can literally become what you wear. I mean, my daughter, whenever she puts on an Elsa dress, she becomes Elsa, you know? From Frozen, yeah. for the people who don't have kids. And <laughs> oh no, girl, I am there. Let it go, let it go. I know Elsa. Exactly, you got it, girl. <laughs> and then also, if, if, if one of the boys put on a, a Spider-Man suit, he's like Spider-Man, you know? So, yeah, you need to look at what you're wearing. You can become that. You see, because the kids are teaching us, you are what you wear. Okay, so I've got the tips. I am good to go. I think I'm ready to go back into normal life. <laughs> You know, we are often told that we must celebrate who we are on the inside and start accepting who we are on the outside. But I think it's so difficult for us as women because of all the images that were shown of, you know, these perfect body shapes. And it's one thing to dress for your body shape. That's one concept. But if we don't start accepting ourselves and celebrating our bodies the way that they are, we're going to struggle for a long time, right? Well, I mean, mm. they keep showing skinny people, beautiful people. So the people are getting confused. And luckily, you can choose who you follow on social media. But I mean, it's very much not nice seeing like you want to look like that yeah. all the time. So yeah. you keep feeling like you're not good enough. And like other body shapes are celebrated as part of campaigns where it's like, exactly. let's celebrate real bodies. And what we're trying to say is like, no, let's move to a time where all body shapes are shown all the time, not that's just for a special thing. campaign that's yeah. like Women's Month, let's love ourselves or yeah. that kind of thing. You see that in your industry as well. True. For me, I feel like representation needs to just be more broader mm. because it's not nice being a plus size woman that actually is not really happy to page through a magazine and they can't see someone that they could look up to, that represents who they are and relate yeah. to. Yeah. So you'd find that even in stores, the mannequins just look like a size zero. Right. Why can't there be plus size uh, mannequins in store as well, where everyone feels like they are being representative, yeah. represented and they are part of the dialogue that happens of what's going to be in fashion? Because yeah. our real body shouldn't be a special occasion. Not at this all. This is who That's we are every young. single That's day. You know, one of my favorite shows on BBC Lifestyle has to be How to Look Good Naked. Yes, <laughs> it's so good. I love it. I literally watched it again before coming here today because I stood in front of the mirror and I really wanted to take on the confidence that all the women that Gok has on the show, you know, how they feel. And in this particular episode, it was the episode with Ames and Helen. And I just want you to have a look at it and look at this one moment that they walk away feeling so positive, but just me watching it, I was like, I want to be like them. Can I do that and stand in front of my mirror? So let's check it out, then we'll talk about it. <laughs> Today is about finding out exactly what the gorgeous public think of your beautiful bodies. My darling, I can see you're looking at my lovely ladies. What's your name? I'm Karen. Hello, Karen. I'm Gok. Nice to meet you. So, here's lovely Ames, here's Helen. Just tell me, what are you thinking when you look at their bodies? I've got a lovely pair of legs. She's got great legs, isn't she? Uh, love the pierced belly button. I used to have one of those. Look at that. All right, then, girls. You know we're in Essex. <laughs> <laughs> this is what women actually look like. Exactly. So, stop looking at the airbrushed images. Look at each other. We all look like this, so we should celebrate it. So girls, what does it feel like to see two women in the shop window, in their bra and pants, but with very real bodies? I think we should see it more, like, more often, all the time. Like, you're beautiful and you should, like, know that. Embrace it. Yeah. This is what people are like. This is us. This is women. Hashtag keeping it real. What do you think of that picture? We love it! Love it! <laughs> You've both got such lovely feminine shoulders and... Haven't they? Yes. And their waistlines as well. Beautiful. And no-one's spoken about their knockers yet. I can't believe I've got <laughs> boobs on the high street and everyone's just avoiding them. <laughs> Absolutely beautiful, big busted ladies. <laughs> now look at your cheeky smile. Hello. Hi. My name's Gokwan, single. Nice to meet you. 
tell us, what do you think of my gorgeous, gorgeous girls, half That's naked right. in the shop window? Are they single, though? Are they, they're not single, I'm afraid. <laughs> this is not a dating show. It's a show. <laughs> <laughs> I just think they both look great. <laughs> Nothing is ever, ever going to be scary again for you when it comes to your bodies, because now you know what this lot, the world, think of you both. And you have got to start believing what everyone else thinks, not just me, all right? How good do you feel now, though? Do you feel good? I do, it. Do you? How refreshing was that to just see real women, real bodies? I even remember the one lady that said, yeah, that's me. That's what we look like. Yeah. I wish we could see more of that everywhere we go. I know. It's amazing. I think it's, again, that, that focus point, you know. You keep fo focusing on your wobbly bits or the bits that are bad that you don't like. Yeah. It's easier for someone that's standing outside of your body to see you and how beautiful you actually are. I mean, look at what they showed them. Like, look at your nice shoulders. Look at your nice boobs, you know? Personally, I related to that as well because, you know, during lockdown, the weight gain has been... I mean, I stood on the scale the one day and I was literally 10 kilograms grams heavier. And obviously, other people will say, but you can't see it, but I know my body, I can feel it. But then I started wearing things that accentuated my shoulders because I love my shoulders, I love my face, love my smile. So I was like, okay, we're going to focus on that rather, as opposed to reminding ourselves that, yeah, here, yeah, you know, it's a bit of a cooler box, but we're working on it. <laughs> <laughs> and on that point, I really, really would like to share the fact that now we all have different shapes and sizes and we need to embrace ourselves for who we are. And the nice thing that I picked up on the clip is the fact that now if you know you've got a problem area around your tummy and your waist, find items that will accentuate those areas. Maybe wear a high waist pair of jeans, a tighter, nice looking belt to distract that area. So I would say that would be really a great thing to do, focusing on those areas that actually we want to hide here and there in terms of styling and look the part. And don't do this thing of, you know, I think when, when you think about live your fullest life, yeah. you tap out of life because you feel like you don't look like everybody else. So mm -hmm. you decide to stay home more. You decide to kind of like not be on video calls. But if you just tap in and say, you know what, I'm going to change one thing at a time and whether it is a clothing item, whether it is a lipstick, whether it is focusing on a part of you that you like, you need to tap in and opt into living life. See, there you go, you've got this. <laughs> this has been such a fulfilling and important conversation and it is one that we could go on having forever because it's needed and very, very relevant for the times that we find ourselves living in. And that is one of the reasons why I love the upcoming shows on BBC Lifestyle because they not only give you the great tips on how you can, you know, help yourself on the outside, those little styling tips, makeup tips, but they also highlight the importance of tackling the inner issues, the inner confidence, so that your beauty can be a job that starts from the inside out. I hope that you are going to be a lot more kinder to yourself, that you're going to show yourself a whole lot more self-appreciation and of course don't forget to tune into BBC Lifestyle to get some more great tips on how you can live your fullest life.